What's going on YouTube? We're back with another video. And the title is not clickbait. In this video, I'm actually going to prepare as if I was going to play Andrew Tate in a chess game. You might be wondering, why are you preparing to play against Andrew Tate in a chess game? Well, there are a couple of reasons, and I think they make this video even more relevant. For those who don't know, Andrew Tate is a big chess player. Actually, his logo, which you can sort of see on the right side here, is a combination of a Cobra, his nickname Cobra Tate, and a chess piece, which is a nod to his love for chess and his dad's passion for playing chess professionally. So Andrew's a big chess player. Andrew Tate is constantly in the news. And recently, he was featured on a podcast hosted by Patrick Bet David. It's the second podcast that he's done after being released from a Romanian prison. In the teaser content leading up to that podcast, Andrew Tate was shown playing chess on chess.com. So here is the clip of Andrew Tate playing chess on chess.com. As you can see, Andrew Tate is playing chess on chess.com. And what makes this even more interesting is you can sort of make out what his chess.com user looks like. Now, it's a long word followed by an underscore, a short word followed by underscore and another short word. It's kind of hard to see, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. Through various means, I was actually able to track this account down. It's called Playing to Win, and it's based in Romania. Now, you might say, how would you know that this is Andrew Tate's account? I'm not saying that it is 100%, but a lot of the facts point in the direction that it is Andrew Tate's chess.com account. So in addition to following the same shape as that image showed, a long word, underscore, short word, underscore, short word, and being based in Romania, this account was completely inactive during the time that Andrew Tate was in prison. And when Andrew Tate was released from prison, this account started up being active again. Secondly, this account is an admin on Andrew Tate's chess club on chess.com. This is the official chess club for the war room. And as you can see, playing to win is a super admin. So all that being said, there's a high chance that this is actually Andrew Tate's chess.com account. Now you might say, okay, it is Andrew's account. Why should we care that you're preparing? Well, Andrew's rating is 1550, and actually, in the past year, he's been rated as high as 1656, which is very, very close to my rating. As you can see, my current Blitz rating on chess.com is 1688. Now, when I'm playing against an opponent that's my strength level, or roughly within 200 points, I really want to do my best to prepare against that opponent. Preparation in chess is understanding what an opponent is going to play in the opening so that you can have a proper response to that. You want to be able to use data to look through their games and understand where do they have strengths and where do they have weaknesses within their opening. Obviously, once you get to the middle game, once you get to the end game, you can't really use preparation for that. That's more chess skill. But if you do prepare, you increase your chances of getting a favorable position once you do get out of book. So with that being said, let's prepare to play against Andrew Tate in chess. My favorite way to prepare is using openingtree.com. Now, openingtree.com is free to use. It's open source, and it plugs into both LeeChess and Chess.com. So all I have to do is come over to openingtree.com and type in Andrew Tate's username, playing to win. As you can see, I've already put it in. We're going to start with Andrew Tate playing white. So I'm going to select white. The second thing that I want to do is I want to get recent games. Andrew Tate's account goes all the way back to like 2015, 2018, something like that. But I want to understand what my opponent is going to be playing based on what they've played recently. So I'm actually gonna change the from date to, you know what, there's a lot of inactivity on this account, so let's actually go back to January of 2022, uh, the start of the new year of 2022 as our start date. There are other features that you can click on here, including time controls. So for example, I could use only rapid or only blitz games, but for this video, I'm actually just gonna use the default settings. So again, we click analyze games, and as you can see, the opening tree is pulling all the games that playing to win has played as white since January 1st, 2022. All right, we have 89 games, not a bad sample size. Let's take a look. All right, right off the bat, I already know based on opening tree that Andrew Tate plays exclusively D4. That is so helpful. The first move is really gonna dictate a lot of positions, obviously. There's e4, which is the most popular opening. There's d4, there's c4, there's knight f3. There's so many different openings that your opponent can play if they start as white. They are dictating the direction of the game. So already, a lot of those options are shrunk down. I know Andrew Tate plays d4, so I'm going to prepare for d4. All right, Andrew has faced a lot of different responses against d4. Um, and let's see. Wow, something automatically really sticks out here is that Andrew's score against knight f6 is pretty poor. Uh, knight f6 leads to a lot of the Indian positions. So the King's Indian, the Nimzo Indian, actually some Grunfeld as well. So even though I'm a d5 player, 
Andrew scores really plus, really positive against D4. D, I'm sorry, D, D5. And he scores pretty poorly against Knight F6. So I'm actually going to do something I wouldn't normally do. And I'm actually going to prepare to play Andrew with Knight F6. Okay. Knight F6, C4. So Andrew's not going to get into any of the um, potential other options. Uh, C4 actually, I think, is the best move here. So we're going to assume C4. Okay. Wow. Again, something really obvious stands out here is that Andrew's score against G6, which is the King's Indian, um, is, is pretty poor. So again, let's go with the option where Andrew is the least comfortable. Okay, here Andrew plays uh, always Knight C3. All right. Um, there's, there's likely a couple of different options here. It looks like Andrew's face D5, D6, but Bishop G7 is the most common. So let's go Bishop G7 because um, I'm a little bit more comfortable in those positions. Okay, again, only one line. So Andrew plays the same thing against this every single time. And we're going to get a really standard, we're going to get a really standard King's Indian position here. Um, against Castles, Andrew's won that game. So I'm just going to go D6. Again, nothing new here. Um, just pretty typical. All right, I also just fixed the camera here, slid out of the way so you can see the full board. Apologies for that. All right, let's see. Andrew actually has responded a couple of different ways in this opening. So I would have to here prepare for both Bishop E3 and Bishop D3. Now, hmm, let's see. Against Bishop D3, obviously he has a worse score, but I'm actually curious. Um, I think the best move here actually is Bishop E2. So... Let's see. Um, and when you're stuck, when you're at a position where it's like, hey, what, what actually is going to happen here? Um, I need to prepare for a couple different options. One of the really great features that Opening Tree has is computer analysis. And actually, your study will be cloned in Lee Chess. So you get to come over to Lee Chess, and you can turn the engine on, and you can see what's the best move, what should my opponents play. So here, we need to either prepare for Bishop D3 or Bishop E3. Okay, so either one of those options, I believe, in this position is going to be completely okay. Um, and let's see where where the where the thread comes back here. Bishop d3, bishop d3 by castles. Okay, so Andrew has not actually seen uh, knight g4, which is the top move in this position. <clears throat> Interesting. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, you usually see in castles. What does he usually see against bishop d3 okay bishop d3 andrew sees castles as well so what is the best move against bishop d3 castles it is okay bishop d3 uh and then it looks like knight f3 is going to be the best response to this okay is that what andrew plays it looks like andrew does not play the best move typically against castles in this position another interesting fact for us so let's see it looks like andrew is usually playing bishop e3 and this transposes to a couple of different positions. So let's see, is bishop e3 good or is it a mistake? No, we've all, okay, so we have cracked the code already. Andrew typically is going to make a mistake around move six against the king's Indian. He, white starts the game, white typically has an advantage. Andrew has already consistently made a mistake against the king's Indian on move six. He is going to play bishop e3 and allow us to gain a tempo on the bishop. Now, this is a huge advantage to be able to have as black already in move six. So I'm going to go into this game and say, likely, I'm going to be able to get this position. Now, what you probably want to do is see how does this convert? You know, Andrew doesn't have any data points on his own, um, you know, within the games that he's played. So let's see what the computer recommends here. All right. So if you get queen e2, you just want to take. And this is actually great for us because we've already cashed in the advantage. Um, we have a better position at minus 1.2. So minus one point, wow, the computer's going up, minus 1.5. So we're a pawn and a half advantage. All right, so what I'm gonna say here is that this is the position I'm probably gonna wanna play against Andrew Tate. And really helpful for me to know that um, knight c6 here is, is a really good move. So do I have any other questions about this position? Um, I've seen Andrew, it, it showed it in the, last, in, in, in the last scene that he does like to put the knight here. Um, I also want to check, what if he takes back with the pawn here? Okay, so this is good to know. If he takes back with the pawn, then what I want to do immediately is to play c5. So again, if he takes, um, we're going to run into trouble here because his pawns are now going to be tripled. So this is my goal here against Andrew, and this is really all I need to know to be able to secure that advantage. All right, so that was pretty easy. We're already able to prepare to get about a pawn advantage on move seven against Andrew Tate as black. Okay, now how about if Andrew's playing black and we're playing white? 
where does Andrew get uncomfortable? So again, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna set the same filters, uh, black, rated and casual games, all default except for the date where I'm gonna set the date as about a year ago so I get enough data points. Let's see, where is Andrew, where is Andrew typically getting uncomfortable? I'm not an E4 player, so I think actually in, in when you're preparing against someone where your opponent is black, you actually probably don't wanna to look too much at where they are weak on first moves or even in some cases, second moves. What you wanna do is see where can I get a position where I'm comfortable, even if it's not a huge advantage, where can I pretty much predict um, where I'm gonna be able to get a position that feels favorable to me, but also isn't too far outside of my comfort zone. All right, so I'm gonna play I'm gonna play D4. It looks like Andrew has two responses here, D6 and D5. D5 is, is the move that I you know, typically would be prepared for. I'm actually curious about D6. I would think that this is a mouse slip, but what does he play after I play C4? Ah, is he gonna play a King's Indian? Okay, we're just gonna go through some King's Indian lines. Yeah, okay, <laughs> it's funny because Andrew has a weakness against the King's Indian with white, but actually he typically is playing the King's Indian as black. Pretty interesting. All right, so knight f3 here I don't think is a good move. At least it's not from not the move I play, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the move I play, which is gonna be e4. Let's see, bishop g7. Okay, so I, I already see here that Andrew is not really well prepared against the move that I play, the semi overback system, which is bishop f2. So there are no games that he's played against bishop f2. So already I know here that if we get into this position, I've played hundreds of games in this position. Andrew has played zero. So I don't even really need to go more into prep against Andrew specifically here. I just need to study my lines. So that's what I would do here is I would go back and I would study my lines. Now, what we know is that Andrew doesn't always necessarily play D6. Sometimes, and actually more often, he plays D5. Okay, so if Andrew does play D5, how do we proceed? Um, I'm gonna play C4, that's the move that I play. Um, it looks like there are two moves that Andrew's capable of playing. One is a counter gambit with e5, but the way more likely move that he's gonna play is just the queen's gambit declined. Very, very straightforward. Here I play knight c6, not really much to see. Knight f6, his only response. Okay, again, we've exposed something that's really interesting. Andrew is typically not seeing the modern line or the line that I typically play against the queen's gambit, which is bishop g5. He's typically and only seeing um, knight g3. So again, this is a place where I can stop preparing against Andrew almost completely and just go and study my lines. See, in this position, and if I pull it up on the computer, I'm pretty sure that the computer is going to recommend bishop g5 here uh, because this is this is the modern. But let's see. Okay, the computer is going to recommend takes. That is that is also a move you see, but I think bishop g5 is is also pretty good. It's not good. It's not good. Bishop g5 is not good. So I've been playing a suboptimal line, and this is why you prepare. This is why you prepare. So I should take. The computer says it's a huge difference, actually, from plus 0.4 to minus 0.1. Wow. I actually just, this is another huge benefit of preparing. You can see your own weaknesses in your own game. All right. So I guess I'm taking. I guess I'm taking. Has Andrew seen takes? Has Andrew seen takes here? No, Andrew hasn't seen takes either. Okay, so takes, all right, so we wanna go through the moves here. If pawn takes, then, then, okay, then you do wanna play bishop g5. All right, pretty straightforward. And they really wanna make sure, see, this is kind of the structure that I was thinking about anyway, but I was thinking the different move or bishop, bishop g5 and, and then takes. Uh, bishop g5 or then e6 and then takes but okay this is this is actually pretty interesting yeah you, the, the the opponent wants to put the structure the idea here in this position is if you go here i go here um, there's something like this preparing a castle you want to put the bishop here this is all very very straightforward all position that that i'm pretty comfortable in the idea here if we just follow the computer lines um and i actually am not going to follow like too 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 heavy here um get something like this you want to save the bishop Okay, they wanna trade off the bishop, but let me just make some example moves here. Um, say for example, I don't know, you waste time, you know, whatever, just ignore this for now, it gets the castle, say he doesn't do this. What I really wanna do, um, and say, let's say um, I get another move here, and, and say he goes back. Okay, so in a position like this, the idea is that I wanna put the, the queen on c2, 
Um, and also I have the opportunity in this Carlsbad structure to go for a minority attack, or I can create a battery on the light squares. And the idea is that my opponent's probably gonna have to weaken his king playing something like g6 and bishop f5. All right, so actually I feel pretty prepared now. I kind of understand basically the three different options that my opponent, Andrew Tate, could potentially play. Um, one option, I'm gonna play the King's Indian if I'm black against Andrew Tate. If I'm white against Andrew Tate, I know what I'm going to play against the Queen's Gambit declined. I'm going to take on d5 and get a position that looks something like this. And then secondly, if Andrew plays the King's Indian against me, I'm going to play what I normally play against the King's Indian. So there you have it. We're now prepared to play chess against Andrew Tate. And since Tate is very close to my rating, I feel a lot more confident that if I were going to play him, I would know the right moves and the right structures to get in the opening. That would give me a pretty good chance of having a good result against Tate. All right, that being said, what do you think of this preparation? Do you think this was good prep? Do you think I didn't go deep enough? Do you think I did go deep enough? Do you think I should even prepare at all to play a game of chess against Andrew Tate, even though the likelihood of us playing is pretty small? Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe. It really does a lot to support the channel. Appreciate y'all. Take care.